Surgical techs prepare operating rooms, arrange equipment, and help doctors during surgery. In this video, we're going to help you answer the question, should you become a surgical tech in 2020? We're going to go over the latest salaries, job market statistics, and the latest trends. Coming up. Hey everyone, Stephen Hack here with Career Watch, where I help you with your career search. If you end up enjoying the video, hit that thumbs up to support the channel. All the charts and graphs used in this video are available at my blog at www.careerwatch.co. Surgical techs are also known as operating room technicians, and they have a number of roles and responsibilities. They prepare the operating room for surgery. They sterilize equipment and make sure there are adequate supplies. They ready patients for surgery. They help surgeons and doctors during surgery, and they take and maintain an inventory of supplies. After an operation is complete, surgical techs may apply bandages and other dressings to the patient. So what is the average salary of a surgery tech? Well, this data is from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. It doesn't include tips, benefits, and other forms of compensation. It only includes base salaries. In 1909, the Bureau of Labor Statistics recorded $27,560 as the average base salary for surgery techs. Two decades later, in 2019, this average base salary increased to $50,110. So wages grew by $23,000 from 1999 to 2019. Using $1,120 as the average wage growth for surgery techs, which is what we got from the last chart, we can predict that surgery techs in 2020 made around $50,000 as a base salary, and by 2029, this will rise to about $61,000. Another thing to keep in mind is the base salaries are very different depending on the state at which the surgical tech is employed in. The lowest paying state in 2019 was West Virginia, where the average surgical tech earned a base salary of around $37,000 per year. Meanwhile, in Alaska, the highest paying state on average for surgical techs, the average base salary is around $68,000. So there is actually a $30,000 difference between the lowest paying state for surgical techs and the highest paying state, Alaska. Other top paying states for this occupation include Nevada, California, DC, Minnesota, Washington, and Connecticut. So what is the average starting salary for a surgery tech? Well, this is kind of how the pay breaks down. Starting salary would probably be around the 10th percentile for someone entering this occupation. It'd probably be around 33,000 per year. Whereas someone that has lots of experience and live in a good job market, the top 10% of surgical techs earn over 71,000 per year. With other occupations, the work environment plays a huge role in compensation. Not really so with surgical techs. There really isn't a big difference between the highest paying work environment, outpatient care centers, and the lowest paying work environment, dentist office. Only about a $5,000 difference. It seems like where the surgical tech is employed plays a much greater role in their compensation over the work environment. Compared to similar occupations, surgical techs do pretty well. They out-earn dental assistants, they out-earn licensed practical nurses, and they out-earn medical assistants. But they are out-earned by clinical lab techs, and they are out-earned by registered nurses. So that covers the compensation of surgical techs. Let, next, let's get into the job market. Is this a growing occupation? Is this a shrinking occupation? How competitive is it? Well, this data is also from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. They've been collecting jobs data for over two decades. In 1999, there was about 65,000 employed surgical techs. By 2019, this rose to 109,000 employed surgical techs. This is a gain of about 45,000 jobs over a period of two decades. The government is optimistic about the future job market. They're anticipating a 7% growth in the number of jobs over the next 10 years. This would mean that by 2029, there'd be about 117,000 employed surgical techs. So this is a growing occupation. The jobs are not evenly dispersed across the country. This is because certain states have way more people than other states. So most of the jobs are in California, Texas, and Florida. Another thing I really enjoy doing is comparing the number of employed with the number of job postings on the really popular search engine, indeed.com. This way you can gauge how competitive this occupation really is, like what is the ratio between the number of job postings to the number employed. So I went on indeed.com and I searched for surgical tech or surgical technologist, and it gave me 7,810 job postings. In 2019, there was about 109,000 employed surgical techs. So this is a ratio of one job opening per 14 employed surgical techs. From what I've seen with different occupations, anytime there's a ratio 
less than one to 10, there's a shortage. 10 to 20, it's kind of evenly balanced, like an even saturation. And anything over 20 is the occupation is pretty competitive. So for surgical techs, I found that there was a ratio of one to 14. So there isn't too much competition, but there isn't a shortage either for jobs. And speaking of jobs, most of the jobs are in hospitals. 73% of surgical techs work in hospitals. This makes sense. About 10% work in outpatient, outpatient care centers, 10% physician offices, and 3% actually work in dental offices. So what kind of people actually become surgical techs? Well, if you haven't done a RIASEC assessment, definitely consider checking that out. There's quite a few free RIASEC assessments online. This is a way of figuring out what your interests are and then comparing your interests with people in different occupations. If you do take a RIASEC assessment, it'll give you scores in six different occupational themes. For surgical techs, they score high in the realistic and the social theme. People that score high in the realistic theme tend to describe themselves as reliable, practical, thrifty, persistent, reserved, and self-reliant, and they're motivated by building, repairing, and being outdoors. People that score high in the social theme tend to describe themselves as helpful, cooperative, kind, cheerful, and patient, and they're motivated by helping, empowering, and instructing others. So that covers the interests of people that work as surgical techs. Next, what is the average personality of someone that works in this occupation? According to the Myers-Briggs company, the top four personality types that work as surgical techs, the most common ones found in this occupation are ESFJ, ESFP at about 12%, ESTJ around 11%, and ISTJ around 11%. So that covers the kind of people that actually become surgical techs. Next, what is the education required to become a surgical tech? To get into this occupation, you typically need an associate's degree or a certificate from an accredited program. There's actually about 500 accredited surgical technology programs found in colleges, vocational schools, universities, and hospitals. Another interesting tidbit is the Bureau of Labor Statistics surveyed the education of surgical techs in 2017, and this is what they found. They found that 2% had less than a high school diploma, 20% had a high school diploma or equivalent, 33% some college, 22% associate's degree, 18% a bachelor's degree, and 3% had a master's degree. Because this occupation isn't regulated in many different states, many people seem to be, be able to get in without going to college at all. So as you can see, there are pros and cons to becoming a surgical tech in 2020. There's a pretty low barrier to entry. It is recommended to go to an accredited program, but very few states actually regulate this occupation. Given that higher educational is optional for this occupation, the pay is pretty good given that you don't really have to get a bachelor's degree. A bachelor's degree is not required. There's pretty good job growth potential and this occupation is growing faster than the average occupation across the United States. Are you a surgical tech? What do you enjoy about this occupation and what do you dislike about this occupation? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.